We're about to start a really ambitious six-month season uh, starting at the beginning of April. We are taking the ship from Tampa to Gulfport, testing a few new upgrades to the ship, including a new satellite and ROV cable. Uh, and then we'll start the season with a cruise uh, with a geyser community. That's a group of scientists who are interested in studying the hydrocarbon seeps and the fate of those gas bubbles. So looking at where they go in the water column and then actually all, following them all the way up to the atmosphere this year. The second cruise of the season is the Eco Gig Leg and this is looking at the impacts of oil on the deep sea corals, um, both natural and the Macondo oil spill. Uh, it's the third year we've worked with this team and this is the fourth series of photographs of corals to look at how they've changed over time. The follow-on to that cruise is actually going to brine pools and looking at cold seeps and looking at these interesting muscle communities that seem to exist symbiotically with bacteria uh, in very low oxygen environments and, and trying to figure out how these mussels make a living in this very inhospitable environment. Following the Cold Seeps cruise, we're going to do our first basic exploration cruise in the Gulf of Mexico. This is working with uh, scientists who want to test out a laser mass spectrometer. This is an instrument that can measure the constituents of seawater and gases coming out of the seafloor. So we're going to go to a couple of different environments. Um, some deep water coral sites that have some seeps associated with them, as well as brine pools. Uh, we're going to continue with our high resolution mapping of these brine pools that have shown some really interesting results, including different density layers, different layers of stratification within the brine pool. Uh, another site that we're going to visit on that cruise is a potential shipwreck, uh, 1800s era shipwreck. The target was provided to us by uh, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, and so that's a potentially really exciting discovery for us this season. The next cruise after that will occur on the other side of the Panama Canal, so Nautilus is going to make its way to Panama, go through the canal on this 100th anniversary of the Panama Canal and then transit to the Galapagos Rift first to do some mapping in advance of a cruise there. Now this site is about 200 miles east of the Galapagos Island, uh, where Darwin of course first hypothesized the theory of evolution that revolutionized the way we view life on Earth. Well, the discovery in 1977 by Dr. Ballard and a team of scientists of chemosynthetic organisms miles down in the ocean at this Galapagos Rift also revolutionized science because it's the first time that scientists understood that there can be life that exists on something other than photosynthesis. Again, this is miles down in the ocean where it's cold and dark um, and animals, these giant six to eight foot tube worms are existing on chemicals coming out of the crust of the ocean. Uh, this rift is also really incredible geologically because it's spreading at a rate of two and a half inches a year. So a lot has probably changed over the last 38 years and we're going to return, look at some sites that Dr. Ballard originally discovered in the 70s and also some new sites that other ships including the Okeanos Explorer discovered more recently. So when the Nautilus leaves Galapagos, we will begin a mapping transit to an area off of Mexico where satellite altimetry data, which has a global coverage of the map of the Earth, uh, suggests that there are seamounts. Because altimetry data has a lower resolution than mapping data, seafloor mapping data from acoustic systems, we're going to go there and make the first maps and determine if these seamounts actually exist. From there, we will go to San Diego and begin several cruises off of the uh, what are called the California borderlands. This is an area that spans from Santa Monica to San Diego, California. And for an area that has a dense uh, population on shore, very little is known about the offshore region. So we're going to go look at some potentially very tectonically active areas, try to make better maps and understand the geology that supports some very diverse ecosystems. One of the other sites of interest is an archaeological site. This is the site of the airship, the USS Macon. This is a rigid airship that was built by the U.S. Navy and also used as an aircraft carrier, so they would dangle planes from this airship to launch into flight. Uh, unfortunately, the airship sunk in the 1930s, so we're going to go take a look at it and make some maps of it so that archaeologists can better understand the site. Our final cruise of the season is with Ocean Networks Canada. We're going to be working off of the coast of Victoria, Canada to work on the cabled network observatories. There are two up there, Venus and Neptune. And these observatories host scientific sensors and experiments that send real-time data back to shore for scientists to observe the seafloor around the clock. 
Uh, it's going to be really exciting. Nautilus is going to work with different ships to help observe the construction of new nodes, um, the reinstrumentation of certain platforms, and some of the sites that we're going to be seeing here are spectacular, uh, including the Endeavour hydrothermal vent.